Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's Monastery. Today is the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Times. Our celebrant is Father Matthews and our opening song is Meadows and Mountains. Please stand. Meadows and mountains, ye forests and fountains, ye heavens and hillsides, give thanks to the Lord. Princes and paupers, ye wind and ye waters, in daylight and darkness, give thanks to the Lord. Sing rivers and rainstorms, sing lightning and thunder, sing summer and snow. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all of you here at our chapel at St. Paul Monastery and also welcome those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. Today we do celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. And so we come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to people of good will. Good will. We and praise you, we, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son 
of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakah's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the word of your hand. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. For you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your Because of your kindness and your truth, when I call you, answer me, you build up your strength within me. proud he knows from afar your kindness O lord endures forever forsake not the work of your hand lord your love is eternal do not forsake A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You are 
are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia. be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, one very brief announcement, as we've been saying for a long time that we are expecting new members of our community, and so the first has arrived, Brother Joe Dubois, who came from Staten Island. He's the first, and the other two hopefully will be coming within the next several weeks, but we never know for sure until they actually step into our door. So we're glad to have Brother Joe with us. He's French-Canadian, so he's one of our Canadian uh, brothers, and we're glad to have you here with us, Joe. Thank you very much. In today's gospel, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and says, who do people say that I am? And they give all the renditions of who they think that people think he is. And then he comes to them specifically, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of God. So the first thing that we are called to do is at some point in our life, we have to state that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. We don't come out and say, well, Father Matthew told me, the teachers told me, my parents told me, my grandparents told me, which is all great and wonderful because that's what we learn from, but at some point we have to state for ourselves exactly who Jesus is and what is our relationship with him, that we have accepted him and he is a part of our life. Now, I know for many years of talking with people on their journey, sometimes people start losing interest in the church and their relationship with Jesus when they're teenagers, perhaps when they go to college and perhaps, quote, lose their faith. But I also know some people return once they get married and they reflect upon the sacrament of marriage and they return to the church or they get ready to have their first child and they begin to realize the importance of the sacraments and of having baptism so they begin to return to the church. And so my challenge is to make sure that we continue as parents as grandparents, to teach our children and our grandchildren, as teachers and and as pastors, to tell people about the importance of the Eucharist, the importance of the Mass. So we need to pray with them. We need to read the scriptures with them. We need to pray the rosary with them. We can do the Stations of the Cross, not only during Lent, uh, out in our backyard, as we call it. We have our cemetery, so we have our Stations of the Cross. So go out there and say hello to the guys and praise the, the, the Stations of the Cross while you're out there because it's a place of learning and it's a place of letting people know. 
And I think we also then have to make sure that we continue, even when our children and grandchildren begin to falter, to make sure that we foster the prayers and devotions. So perhaps we need to support our schools, especially our Catholic schools, elementary schools and high schools and colleges, and make sure that they're getting the teaching that is there. And if we can not afford to do that, maybe uh, make sure, or if we don't have children, make sure that we're supporting those schools, supporting those places that the education is giving them or if we can't afford to send, that we support the religious education programs that are in our parishes. Now, I know when I was in college, there was a strong uh, Newman Center. I went to Moorhead State University, a little shout out to my uh, alma mater there in Kentucky, go Eagles, you know, okay. That was my plug for my university, but we had a strong Newman Center, and so there was a great deal of the liturgies focused on the young adults, those of us in college, and I think it helped to foster my own vocational call. So we need to make sure that we continue to teach and to guide and to let our children and grandchildren know the importance of their faith so that they will acknowledge that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Now, the second part of today's scripture is that Jesus says that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And if you look at Peter in the early church, especially in the Acts of the Apostles, he was very strong in his leadership. On the Feast of Pentecost, he was mentioned as the first of the apostles gathered in the cynical waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. He was the one that went out on Pentecost and told people about who Jesus Christ was and brought about the first converts. He was the one who, when he was arrested, went into the Sanhedrin and spoke boldly about this Jesus who was his master and his teacher. He was one who at the uh, first council of Jerusalem was there to accept the Gentiles and said they did not need to have circumcision in order to become part of the church. He was there with Cornelius and uh, saw that he could eat the food that Cornelius a Gentile could eat and so the dietary laws were not binding upon them that were entering the church. He was there to uh, bring about healing and cure so that people were hoping that just the shadow of Peter would show up and bring about healing. So he was very much a strong leader. And since that time throughout the church, we have had successors of Peter. Some of them are saints. Some are great saints. Some of them not so saintly. But we now have our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that we need to support and we need to pray for and we need to encourage because he's challenged us in his own evangelization. He, first of all, his encyclicals have talked about mercy, have talked about peace, have talked about joy. He's also called us to evangelize by saying, let's don't sit in our chapels and our churches waiting for people to come to us. Let us go out to the people, bring them the message, bring them the gospel, bring them our care and concern. And so we are able to go out and do that, and the church is doing that. And many uh, parishes here in the diocese are reaching out to those who are in need. We have organizations such as our Knights of Columbus and the St. Vincent Paul Society. We reach out and help those who are in need, reach out for those who need assistance. And so as members of the body of Christ, members of the church, we're able to reach out and to do that because we are following what our Holy Father is calling us to do. We in the Society of St. Paul, we take a fourth vow, a vow of fidelity to the Holy Father, primarily in the ministry that we are doing because we are publishers, we use the media, and so we want to make sure that we're proclaiming the teaching of the church, the teaching of the Holy Father, and we're not sending out anything that is against that teaching. And so that's why we take that fourth vow. Our founder thought it was very important for us in our ministry to do so. So all of us today are called to witness to our children and our grandchildren, all those in our families and friends, how important it is to have a relationship with the Lord. And then also let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, to encourage him with our prayers and support as he leads our church today. Let us stand together now and share our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. 
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord's love is eternal, so we have the confidence to bring our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters before God. For the church, that we may boldly profess Jesus as Lord and help others to come to know and follow him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that the Holy Spirit will guide him in proclaiming the good news, promoting unity in the church, and inspiring us to a greater love and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, pray hear Lord. our prayer. For an end to the pandem pandemic, that God will deliver the human race from the virus, heal those who are ill, and give strength and wisdom to those who care for them, and inspire those who are developing treatments and vaccines, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound and the sick, that God will protect them, renew their spirits, and restore them to wholeness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those suffering from the storms in Iowa, that God will relieve their pain, protect them from further harm, and give them strength of spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we pray this Mass, let us remember Tammy Kern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous and merciful God, look with kindness on us here today and hear the prayers we make to you. Grant them according to your will through Christ your Son and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Without clouds, the rain can't wash the land. Without rain, the grass won't hide the sand. Without grass, the flowers bloom won't grow. Without pain, the joy saw a sunrise that didn't follow night, hardly saw it shining till a shadow blocked its light, never took a journey and not leave some place behind, not feel some anguish for some peace of mind without clouds the rain can't wash the land without
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, all our bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Tammy Kern. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us turn it off to each other, a sign of peace. take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spirit, spiritual communion for those who are unable to be here. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sing to the Lord with shouts of joy, let all creation rejoice. Come join the song of praise to our God, He is the Lord, He is the Lord. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all you nations.